Uh, yeah, so um, this is the uh, second part to the, um, the MGTOW Discipline uh, series. Um, I've just had a listen to that first uh, part and the sound quality on that is atrocious. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, I've done what I can to, to mitigate it. I didn't realise it was so bad, but I can't really um, go back and re-record it because it, it's all off the cuff, this stuff. I'm not, there's no script here. Uh, I'm just um, laying it out, you know, and I'm happy with what I said in that first one. I don't, I don't think I can say it all again, so I'm just going to have to plow on. Um, so I've done what I can to, to help with this one with the sound quality, uh, and I hope, I hope you guys forgive me for that, that first one. Um, having said that, let's, let's get on with it. Uh, so um, I've, I've said... Um, you know, the, the, you um, have in your mind that there's, you know, something wrong. Um, and today, like this, you've got the internet here. There's plenty of content that's that will do in place of um, Warren Farrell's book or, or any of the other uh, stuff from the MRM uh, or the men's rights movement. Um, which was what um, was kind of one of the impetuses for me to to go MGTOW. Now, when I say go MGTOW, at the time MGTOW didn't exist. There was no acronym for, for what was occurring um, at, at all. So uh, the men's rights movement was was growing. Now. During this time in my personal life, I've um, do, I've left um, the mother of my child, my first son. I've I've dissolved that relationship. Uh, it wasn't. Um, I knew something was wrong with the relationship. I didn't know what it was. Uh, it, it wasn't until I got out of the relationship I realised how abusive it was. The, the, the woman that I was with was. Um, very controlling, very manipulative, and very good at what she did. Uh, and I left my son with her, uh, and like I, uh, um, I, I'm going to have to like delve a little bit into it. It's a little bit personal, um, but it uh, illustrates why the MGTOW, uh, why. The red pill in me, and the and then the MGTOW um, came on strong. Okay, so um, I'm paying child support, um, and in Australia, child support's 18 percent of your uh, gross income for one child, uh, and that is uh, taken out of your uh, wages or salary um, before by the government before. Uh, you receive the money in your bank account and uh, in other words they call it garnishing your wages and um, and then you pay tax on the full amount so you've lost nearly a fifth of it and then you get taxed again at around 20 percent so you know your life no matter the harder you work the more money you lose you know um, uh, and that's that's the system. Now, the woman that I was with, she then proceeded to weaponize my child against me, um, and it, like it, it was, I, I went to the authorities to try and highlight this this abuse because that's it was just psychological abuse and emotional abuse of my child. Uh, and I mean, you're in a position in that stage where you've got the mother of the child abusing him to get back at you and what are you going to do? Are you going to then carry on abusing the child to get back at her? Are you going to confront her? Because she's only interested in the effect that this um, shit is, is having on you. Right, she's not going to stop what she's doing, even if you do confront her. And I did confront her. Okay, 
And it was just, you could, she was just smiling, grinning from ear to ear, knowing that what she was doing to my child was um, affecting me in the desired manner, the desired way. And it just made her go harder, you know. Um, and like it takes a certain type of man to abuse a child in that way and that's a sadistic scum of the earth man to abuse a child like you know I, like think of think of the worst thing a man can do and then that's one of them right this is a, a, for a woman it's something for entertainment's sake right the w women have have no boundaries there's no depth of depravity that a woman won't stoop to 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 get to the ends that she wants right make no mistake about it this is part of female nature um, and because it, it, it happens all the time i'm not robinson crusoe on this one so i've approached the authorities i'm paying this freaking money to this woman she's abusing my child I approached the authorities to get something done for my child and they're not into they, they, they tell me to my face apart from getting the money off you we that we are not interested in anything that that woman is doing so state condoned child abuse uh, and nothing I can do I'm you know, spending money trying to get lawyers to freaking do this you know so I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll, this is this is was one of the bonding moments I had with my son. So uh, it's my my uh, weekend to have the, the, my son, and um, the she she is dropping him off now. This she didn't usually do this because if I let her drop my kid off, she'd drop him off late and pick him up early. Right, so I, I said, fuck that, I'm going to go and get him and drop him back when I, you know, so that I don't miss out on time. So I get this phone call and uh, she's saying to me, uh, my son, I called him by his name, I'm not going to tell you that, um, he, he doesn't need his father. And I, I said, what are you talking about? And she just, well, that's... You know, it's been determined that uh, a child doesn't need doesn't need his father. Um, he's got lots of um, good male role models in his life, um, in his uncles and uh, the men, in his other men in his life. She didn't tell me what they were, who they were, uh, and so he, he doesn't need his father. You know, and and in the background, I can hear my child sobbing just sobbing and um i said to her where are you and, and she said oh i'm in the car out, outside your house so i said right wait there hung up the phone or it was a mobile with the, like one of those old bricks you know uh, so just put that down went out opened the the passenger door here's my son sobbing uncontrollably on the passenger seat I, I just said come on I ignored whatever she was saying I didn't want to talk to her um, just said come on come on come with me and he's like tears streaming down his face snot running out his nose can't breathe for sobbing I've taken him upstairs I've sat him on the couch and I said listen son look I've got called him by his name you know um, yes you, you do have strong male role models in your life. Uh, that's true. Uh, they're your uncles. Now, personally, I thought his uncles were fucking assholes. I'm not going to say that to him. He, he needs to be able to have, form his own relationships with his uncles. So I said, yep, you have... Um, your, your uncles are, are all good men. Um, they're, you know and they all love you but they don't know you like i know you and they don't love you like i love you 
and his tears like it was like turning the switch off he just he stopped crying it was at the point where he couldn't breathe for crying you know and then as soon as i said that to him he recognized that as the truth because it was the truth and he um just immediately stopped crying and you know, we we move forward from there now for him to get into that state uh, his mother's been saying this to him on the hour and a half drive it took to get to my place you know um, and he's defenseless absolutely fucking defenseless against it and she's had him in this state and not shown any remorse or any compassion or any empathy to a crying child now that that takes a, a real psychopath of a, a male to 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 get in that situation to even contemplate making that situation happen yet with a woman half of the course so this was one of the incidences where i realized that all this idea that women are just nurturing caring you know um, giving human beings if they're not being like can i don't like want to use the word control but it's men that teach this to women compassion and empathy it's not that's not native to women they don't they don't um and they're not born with it they've got no barriers so i'm getting back to the MGTOW um point so i've ditched the tv i've taken a step back um, and i'm fighting this system that is going to take money off me and absolutely deny me my rights as a father to protect my child there's no like that and it is an official policy it's not just me saying oh this is what they you know this is how i felt i was told by the authorities that this woman could abuse my child with impunity deny me access to him do whatever she fucking wanted they were solely concerned with getting the money out of my account and into her account that was it and to me that was the plantation that was sit down shut up plow that field put that yoke on get on there and we couldn't give a fucking rat's ass about you your rights or your child's rights or your child's welfare you make money for the state and the state pays that some of that money to the woman who's abusing your child and there's nothing you can do about it and we're not going to lift a fucking finger to help you because you're a single white man that was this that was coming from the the federal authorities in australia at the time and it hasn't changed so to me I, my view was fuck you fuck the system i don't want this in my life i don't want to be a part of this i don't want anything to do with it and that was my MGTOW journey that was the the day i well the, the time i decided i'm going my own way i'm, I'm not going to be a part of this this whole shit heap that's called modern society i'm not i'm not interested in it so i went uh full monk mode um now i was working in it at the time um and, and in that environment plenty of women uh and plenty of women wanting me uh as a provider as a wallet uh, just because of my uh, position uh, this and the profession I was in um, you know this like year 2000 dot com boom everyone was making money left right and center um, and, and about software developers right programmers were 
sought after by women back then and because um, that, that was like I'd been on dates right and and what the women would say was you know hello I'm blah 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 and you'd say hello I'm so, so and so uh, and they'd just say what do you do for a living in other words how much money do you make uh, and where do you live in other words what sort of assets have you got? And I was living in an affluent suburb and I was in a profession that was sought after by women. Not that they wanted to work in the profession, they wanted uh, men, the men's resources. So after, after you told them where you lived and what you did for a living, they weren't interested in anything else about you at all. Right? They just wanted uh, the, the rest of the conversation was solely about them uh, all the time. Like, it's like every fucking day. What do you do? You know, what do you do for a living? Where do you live? And then just this stream of, well, this is what I want. This is my own, who I am. This is this is blah 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 blah. You know, I'm a I'm a I'm a big, uh, uh, Virgo or some fucking star sign. You know, and blah 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 blah. Um, and, and, and all you do is nod and sweetly, you know, pay the, pay the bill, take the cab back to their place, fuck them, go home, you know. Um, and it was just te tedious, tedious fucking shit. So I, I went full monk mode, I said, can't be bothered with this shit. Full monk mode. Um, and, and that was uh, monk mode for... Oh, probably near on 10 years I would say um, and in that time I was consuming a lot about the MR, MRM the men's rights movement uh, which was really spawned by Warren Farrell's book and so I was, I was watching what was going on with the men's rights movement and I was also seeing the response from the feminist uh, controlled media to this movement and like at the same time experiencing what the men's rights movement was saying in that as a single white man you are absolutely fucked by society and the system that it is against you at every single turn like you they've got affirmative action programs or, or these um, diversity hire programs they were all in place back then the different names but they were all in place uh, back in those days um, and and so a single white man you were battling upstream the, the whole time and being gaslighted telling by the the media telling you that you are the oppressor it was it was all just like and it still is the it's um clown world you know really unbelievable upside down shit and it still is today and the men's rights movement i could see that it was never going to make headway against this entrenched feminist ideology like it was just it was never gonna the feminists were obviously by, by their actions were obviously shutting down the MRM you know, the men's rights movement they were going above and beyond what they had to do to shut this thing down uh, and, and that to me said right you're on the plantation if you even think about putting your head up and having a look out over the fence you're going to get shut down you're going to get stopped you're going to get uh, whack a mold you know and it's still occurring today on facebook on, on uh, youtube it's still occurring today that's what they're doing shutting these channels down uh, they don't want men to realize the position that they are actually in uh, they they want men on the plantation plowing that field.
that's how money gets made and then moved up to the corporations and the elites at the top of the, the food chain by the government. Um, government bailouts and all the rest of it. We've seen we've seen it all. The money goes up, goes out of your pocket and goes up. Um, and you'll pay just enough to come back the next day to plough that field again. And uh, they don't talk to you about um, ways, other ways to make money, like share market. There's no incentive for you to get a better life. That's not your place. Your place is at the bottom to keep ploughing that field. You're a slave on the plantation. And it, well, to me, uh, I, there was nothing clear. There's still, it's, it hasn't changed. So, what I said in the, the first video there was, once you've decided to go MGTOW, I think monk mode is important uh, to break your conditioning. You've got to start to break the conditioning that is being imposed upon you by the the society around you make no mistake this is it is per, so pervasive that it's invisible unless you get that red pill so you ditch your tv you go offline you concentrate on why you're going MGTOW, you concentrate on the red pill, you understand that your decision to go MGTOW is the right decision for you to make at the time you make it. Now, once you've made it, you've got to look around you to see the influences that are dragging you back to that plantation. And then you've got to make strategies in your mind to counter them, to counter this. And it, it, this is it's an all pervasive thing. Your parents, if you open up to your mother and father about MGTOW, they will attempt to get you back on that plantation out of love. Okay? Uh, they, they want you to have a good life. And being on the plantation is safe. So it's a good life. This is, you've got to figure out a way yourself to counteract these influences who are doing it out of um, concern for you and your future, um, and, and out of the goodness of their heart. But it's wrong for you. So, take a step back, have a look at the influences around you. At the same time, stay positive. Uh, set goals. Set goals for the future. Plan how to achieve those goals. Now, they don't have to be huge, um, life-changing, life-affirming goals, okay? You could just say, one of my goals is to spend an extra hour a week at the gym, you know, and then work to achieve that. Set a routine that allows you that extra hour at the gym. Uh, you know, it could be, I want to read uh, more about it on a topic that interests me, and so I'm going to spend money on audio books or I'm going to visit the town library and get paperback books or whatever, hard copy books, um, and read more about topics that interest you. Um, could be I want to restore an old car or an old motorbike. Um, so I need to buy an old motorbike. In order to, to buy the old motorbike, I need money. Therefore, I'm going to um, work a second job or I'm going to uh, work all the overtime I can work so that I can make extra money to to buy this motorbike. Once I've got that, I need 
you know, strip it down, see what needs to be done, plan how to do it, achieve that goal. Um, and, and once you start uh, achieving your own goals through your own impetus and your own uh, motivation, you'll become a stronger person as a MGTOW. You, you get, regain your masculine com competence, confidence uh, in the ability to steer your life in the direction you want to go. Uh, and that, that gets you away from the plantation. You see, you, you're, you're, you, you have time on your hands because you're not pursuing women. Now, that's, a, that's stage three, is, is how to deal with those urges to procreate. Um, so that's enough for today. Um, I rambled a little bit there, but um, understand that there's a plantation. It's real and you're on it uh, if you're not MGTOW. Um, and the, it is systemic. It is the system itself is rigged against you as a man. Understand it and, and see it. You're not alone. Okay, uh, have a good day. Thanks for listening to Papa MGTOW. <laughs>